Yo, what is going on guys? It's Brev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 19 video. I got an absolute banger for you guys in this one. As you can see, we have completed the Oakland Athletics Team Affinity up to 50 stars and have achieved this Matt Olson. Uh, and it's about, it's currently 2.05 a.m. Eastern Time, so the game has only been live for two hours. And we did it completely no money spent, completely free. You can, I actually did not discover this Matt Ols Olson to my massive disappointment because you can do this exchange repeated it, repeatedly. Um, and so if you want to exchange 250,000 exchange points worth of players, you can do it that way. And so someone beat it, beat me to it doing it that way. But anyways, this method of grinding affinities is actually insane. Um, I'm going to go over a slower way to do it and the fast way that I did it. But the fast way requires you to be pretty damn good at the game. So uh, let's get into it. So the best way to grind affinities by far is going to be through the new game mode called Showdown and by going into these division specific showdowns. So we'll talk about the slow way and the fast way. Um, I did it the fast way and it probably took me an hour and 15 minutes to get the entire Oakland Athletics affinity done. So how does this work? Um, you pick a specific division and when you beat showdown for that division, you get what's called team affinity vouchers. And these vouchers grant 4% credit towards a team affinity. They are located here. Now 4% doesn't seem like a lot, but if you beat the final boss of showdown in one of those divisional showdowns, you get five vouchers. So being the final boss in showdown for a divisional challenge gives you 20% towards a team affinity, which means you need to do, three, do it three times to get over 50% and get the diamond player for the face of the franchise. So the way showdown works, we'll just hop into it. I'm going to do Gallo next, so we might as well just start up a showdown. Um, you go in here, you go to the division you want to do. Uh, make sure you're doing the division of the team that you want to complete the team affinity for because the vouchers are division specific. Um, and this does cost, cost a thousand stubs to enter. Now if you beat the final boss you get a thousand stubs back plus the affinity vouchers plus some XP. So when I started it I was at about 1200 stubs now I'm at 4000 so it looks like if you beat it you gain your thousand back plus another thousand. Anyway, how does this work? Um, you're gonna go start draft and your approach is gonna be different whether you're doing this the slow way or the fast way. So I'll talk about the slow way first as you can see on screen, there are all of these mini challenges, and these mini challenges help you to get your team better and your perks better along the way. These are basically moments that are random. If you fail the moments, you do not fail the entire showdown, but I'm pretty sure if you fail one of these little mini bosses, you do actually fail. But these tiny moments are just designed to help your team. As you can see, the farther you get, you get better perks, better players those players go on your team and they're designed to help you with the final boss. So the slow way would be to play these moments out, grind up your team, make sure you're better. Uh, so when you get to that final boss, you have a chance to, a much better chance to win. Also, you start down 15 to zero in the game, but as you move along, as you complete these moments successfully, you actually add runs to your total. So someone in my chat told me that they did every little moment and by the time they got to the final boss, they were only down by one run and they had 20 outs to work with. So <laughs> that's pretty insane. If you're not that good at the game, I would highly re recommend doing it the slow way. You're going to have much more success just grinding out as many of these little moments as you can, uh, making your team and your score differential the best you can before you get to the final boss. Um, that would be my advice. So that's going to change your draft as well because some of these moments involve pitching. So you're going to actually want to draft decent pitchers, both starters and relievers. If you are going to be doing these mini moments, you obviously still want to prioritize hitters. Uh, you'll find out very quickly which hitters you want and don't want because the player pool that you get for your draft is for this division specifically, and you get a lot of repeats the more you do this. So if you're doing these mini moments, make sure you're drafting at least a decent pitching staff and bullpen, but still prioritize hitting um, and make sure you're picking good quirks, which I will, good perks, which I will go into now. I'll talk about it in the fast way as well. So 
The fast way is what we did, and like I said, this requires you to be pretty good at the game. So we're going to do it again here. Uh, we'll go through a draft, and then I will talk about the fast way. So one thing of note, if you're going to do it the fast way, which is to skip all the way to the final boss immediately, um, the final boss battle is a hitting-only challenge, and so in your draft, you're going to want to take hitters at every venture. Um, additionally, the final boss that you face at the end is the same pitcher every time. So for the AL West, that's going to be Justin Verlander. So what I want to do in my draft is I want to look exclusively for the best hitter I can get, and specifically against right-handers, against right-handed uh, pitching, because I know that I'm going to face Verlander for that entire challenge. Now, the only hitter I can pick here is Guriel. Um, this is an all-pitcher round, which doesn't matter because I'm going to skip to the end. Uh, and now we land on Kyle Seeger. So Kyle Seeger is a little bit better than Mark Canna here, even though Canna, uh, Canna has better stats versus righty, so we'll take Canna. But what we're looking for is contact versus right, power versus right. Those are the only stats that matter. Vision as well, I suppose. And look, they gave us Seeger right back. So is he even better than Listella? Listella is better. Sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to draft and talk at the same time. But you notice I just took Listella, even though I have his position taken, and I will get into that as well. So just take the best hitter that you can if you're doing the fast way, um, because position truly doesn't matter at all. Uh, I don't know if this is going to get patched, but it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but it also wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't get patched because it does take quite a bit of skill to do what we're about to do. So you get to draft eight players, and then the last two rounds are perks. You're going to get a silver perk and a bronze perk. Now for perks, the only perks that matter, in my opinion, are the ones that give you bonuses when you are losing. So when you get to the final showdown boss, you are going to be losing the game, whether you do the slow mission or you do the slow way or the fast way. So you're going to want to look exclusively for perks, if you can, that help your hitting and that help you when you're behind. So unfortunately, we did not uh, get any perks for when we're behind, but we did get some nice hitting ones. We want to ignore these pitching ones um, because we're going to be hitting only for the final boss. So contact boost on inside pitches when runner, runners are on base. Um, that's a little too specific for me, so I'm going to go off the radar. Slight contact boost on pitches slightly outside the strike zone. So if you can, um, if you get unlucky like I just did and you don't get a perk that improves your hitting when you're losing, um, just go for one that's more broad than specific because that perk is going to be active more often. Um, and then for the bronze perk, let's see what we got here. Uh, contact boost in full counts. Slight contact boost on inside pitches when runners are in scoring position. Slight contact boost on pitches down the middle. So all of these perks actually suck. We actually low rolled on this. Um, I think I'm going to go top secret because I think I'm going to have runners in scoring position more than I'm going to have full counts. Uh, inner piece is kind of pointless because if the pitch is down the middle, you should be pissing on it anyway. Uh, so we're going to go with insider info. So now make sure you do this. This is an important step. You want to go to manage perks and equip them because they're not automatically equipped. This is designed on purpose because you're supposed to get more perks as you move along this ladder. But if you're doing the fast way, what you can do is you can hit options and skip ahead to the final showdown. Now I'm not going to do it right now, uh, but this is what I did to complete the affinity. So <laughs> it's really hard. Um, I all three of the, I did win all three of my tries, but they were close. So what's going to happen? is you're going to take your team, you're down 15 to nothing, and you have 20 outs to work with. Now the innings don't end, so that does help you a bit um, in that you can just keep rolling through your lineup. Uh, but it's hard, man. 20 scoring, You actually have to score 16 runs, or you lose, because if you, run out of, if you run out of outs and the game is tied, then you lose the challenge. So you have to score 16 runs with only 20 outs. That's why I say if you're going to do it the fast way like I did, um, make sure you're good enough at the game to where you can do this consistently otherwise I would go the slower route which is still a very good method and easily the best way to complete team affinities even if you can't do this the fast way um, this is still infinitely better than exchanges or March to October in my opinion so lastly we're gonna talk about the squad so I mentioned that it didn't matter what positions and what hitters I was picking that is because like I said, the final boss showdown is a hitting exclusive challenge. So 
it literally does not matter who you play where defensively. So like I'm going to put Vogelbach at second base because I'm never going to play defense in the final challenge. It literally doesn't matter. You can put anyone you want at catcher. Just make sure you have one player that you're going to pinch hit with off the bench because your pitcher spot, your pitcher does come up in the final challenge and don't forget to pinch hit for him. Um, but that pinch hitter, since it's a rotate, it's a revolving inning that never ends, uh, that pinch hitter is going to be batting in the nine hole every time you go through your lineup after you pinch hit once. So um, unfortunately, my bench is kind of shallow. I want to use poo holes in my nine hole. And the next best hitter I have, I guess, is Jack Mayfield. So we're just going to put him at catcher because he's better than the 64 common. So um, as far as lineup construction, I would kind of construct it normally. Uh, I would try to prioritize the handedness of which you have an advantage in the challenge towards the top of the lineup so that li those guys get more at bats. So I'm going to go Malik Smith, uh, probably Rendon second, then Vogelbach, then Canna, then Lestella looks good, Guriel, Chu, and finally Mayfield. Once again, the fact that we have people out of position doesn't matter at all. By skipping to the end, you are only doing a hitter's challenge, and you should be good to go on that front. Just make sure you have one guy on your bench that can hit so that you can pinch hit for your pitcher. So that's how I did it. I hope this information was conveyed to you in a good way. Um, I hope you took a lot out of this. This is how I'm going to be grinding for affinities. I fully expect to get 10 affinities done this week. This method is insanely fast um, and even faster if you're good enough at the game to score 16 runs in 20 innings. But like I said earlier, uh, the more you, the more reps you get, um, the better you'll get at it because you face the same pitcher every time. So you're going to, you're going to get better the more you do it. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I'll back out and show you my pride and joy. Matt Olson on the squad. If you guys didn't know, I'm an A's fan. Uh, man, this guy is sexy in real life and in game. Uh, yeah, I was super happy. I thought for sure I was going to discover him because I did this so fast. Uh, but I didn't realize you could just buy players and exchange them and repeat it, repeat it all the way to 50. So that kind of sucks. Still happy to have him. Like I said, it took me an hour and a half at the most to get the entire Oakland A's affinity done up to 50%. And then one final thing I'll mention about these vouchers on the way out is if you're only interested in the player, you only need 50%. But if you complete three of the showdowns, you get 15 vouchers, which is worth 60%. So if you're not interested in going all the way through, um, which I recommend you do, especially for the team that you like because these affinities are going to be extended later, um, but you can actually take your last two vouchers and put it towards another team in that division if you so choose. So like I hit 52 stars for the A's, um, and I still have two vouchers left over that I can put towards the Rangers if I want, and I probably will because that Joey Gallo looks amazing. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Drop a like down below. It helps me out a lot. Drop a comment if you have any questions. I'm really good at responding to comments for you guys. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. More MLB The Show 20 content to come all year for you guys. I love all you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.